Hi, so here's a question a lot of students ask. They ask me about Under Armour stock and if it's a buy, sell, or hold. And I'm going to do some analysis on Under Armour and go over a few things and talk about it. And remember, this video is for educational purposes only. It's not a service for actual financial recommendations or your portfolio. Okay, so Under Armour um, had some great news today. It's up almost 7% to $95. And the big news today is that they uh, beat their earnings estimates. So anytime a company beats their earnings estimates uh, and they have good financial results, that's going to push the um, stock higher. So what Under Armour had was a condition of two things. The, the profits improved and the sales forecast for next year improved. And you, and you see here that there's a, a message from Reuters that uh, Under Armour uh, raises full year revenue and profit forecast. And stocks are all priced in the future. So it's not so much about what they did yesterday or today, it's about how they're going to perform in the future. And Under Armour saying that you know, profits and sales are going to be up in the future. Apparel drop uh, jumped 23% in the second quarter. Uh, foot, footwear sales are 40%, uh, soared 40% to $154 million. And revenues jumped 29% to $783 million. And that's very significant. So Under Armour is having a great day. And, and that's because, like I said, Investors are all about the future, and in the future, it looks like sales and profits are going to go up for Under Armour, and that's pushing the stock higher today. Now, if you look at it, though, is the stock price getting ahead of itself? Um, and that would be, you know, a problem if you're buying into the stock today. If you've owned it for a while, you're very happy, but should you buy the stock today? And we see that the P.E. on the stock, which is <clears throat> price to earnings, and you can see here that the earnings per share is close to a dollar, and, and the stock's close to a hundred. So you can see why it's a, a PE of about a hundred. So you take um, the earnings. I'm sorry, you take the stock price divided by the earnings, and you get the PE multiple. Now a PE multiple of a hundred is is not is kind of uncommon, but in this particular market environment, it's not uncommon for a growth stock. But it is pretty pricey. A hundred times earning is. I feel kind of getting ahead of yourself and it has a valuation of 20 <clears throat> almost 21 billion dollars is what they're saying this company is worth so that is <clears throat> um, pretty pricey now for those of you that don't know Under Armour is a company that makes uh, sports apparel shoes um, shirts uh, hot, uh, cleats, uh, uh, they make footwear for football, softball, baseball, um, <clears throat> they have all sorts of sports apparel is their category. And they're located in, I believe, okay, Baltimore, Maryland. Now let's look at some of the key statistics here. And I'm using Yahoo Finance as sort of just the, the bringer of information. And again, we see that you know the uh, PE of 100 and the peg ratio of 3.49. Now a peg ratio, anything above one is considered overvalued. Uh, two is considered very overvalued and three is extremely overvalued. So the peg ratio, which is looking at earnings and the growth rate, um, is showing that the company is very overvalued. Um, and that's, that's sort of my opinion is that Under Armour is kind of getting ahead of itself. Now, I think it's a good long-term long buy, but in the short term, the stock might be a little too pricey and some of the air could easily escape from this uh, bubble if there's any problems in the stock market. If we have a correction, this is certainly one of the stocks investors, investors may pull away from temporarily in what's called profit-taking. Now, they have you know very decent um, um, growth, especially growth of revenue, 25%, uh, and growth of earnings. However, this uh, quarterly earnings growth year over year says it's down, but the new the new earnings report that came out is, has a better picture. This is sort of the previous quarter. The um, 
Now the revenues are 3.25 billion. So you can kind of take the revenues and look at the size of the company is 20 billion. Uh, the market cap is about 21 billion, and they do about 3 billion in sales. Um, so that's that's a little big of a gap for me because I you know to buy to spend 21 billion to buy a company that, that has you know 3.25 billion in revenues that's a little bit pricey spe specifically if the profit margin is only 6.35 percent if it was a higher profit margin like a software company then maybe i could see paying that much for uh, a company now their cash position is very healthy their debt is really no problem considering their 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 profits and their revenues um, now the stock is up 28% over the last 52 weeks, which is a very nice performance compared to the 6% in the S&P 500. Um, it easily, the, today is the high of the stock for the past year, and the low at some point in the stock was at $60. I've noticed that Under Armour generally has its lows around October, November each year. So that might be a good buy-in point. So if you notice that you like Under Armour stock and you're excited about the news today, today may not be the best day to buy in since it's, it's up uh, six dollars today it generally will cool off in the fall and that might be a better buying opportunity uh, in the fall the uh, it has a tremendous amount of float available and 81 percent of its stock is actually held by institutions so that means that a lot of companies mutual funds and insurance companies and uh, pension funds that like the stock and own it uh, now the short ratio it has a high short ratio percentage of 8.3%, which is not uncommon for a growth stock, but uh, 14 million shares are sold short. So there's a number of people also kind of getting the feeling that this stock is a little overvalued and that there could be some profit taking coming back, uh, coming up in the future. So let's take a look at the, um, the chart and do a little technical analysis on this company and get an idea of where they are so let me put the chart up and I like to work with a chart that's at least uh, a year so let's put a year to date up on the chart and okay let's shrink this a little All right. uh, let's see I want to put a couple indicators here uh, I want to um, Pull down a. I like to work with uh, the relative strength index. I like to work with some moving averages, just a simple moving average like a 50, and maybe we'll put a 100 day in there. Okay, so we'll just work with that for right now. And okay, so the 50 is red, the 100 is blue, and we see here that. Back over here, there was the um, well, the stock was trading, and this is uh, what's the date here? This is back in January. The stock was trading um, below its 50-day, 100-day moving averages here. So that was sort of um, a holding period for the stock. Anytime the stock penetrates the 100-day and the 50-day moving average, that is a really strong buy sign. So as soon as the stock penetrated, say, the um, $65 level over here, surpassing the, the 50 and 100-day moving averages, that's a very strong uh, indicator. Also over here, you notice, you, can, you can't see it too well, but the 50-day uh, breaks above the 100-day moving average, and we get a test of its support uh, at the top. And then it finally breaks through both moving averages, and we have set up a triple buy sign in a chart where we have the stock price above the 50-day, which is above the 100-day. So whenever we see this develop, that's usually a good buying point into the stock. And you can see that ran up to about um, almost $90 or so here before it slipped back down and tested the support, broke through the support of the 50-day, uh, but never went below the 100-day. And then finally, it was able to break above the 50-day moving average right here. And again, this would be, could be one sell sign. So some investors who watch stocks in a more 
uh, trade stocks a little more frequently may have sold when it went below the 50-day moving average and purchased again when it, above, when it went above the 50-day moving average. And you see that would have been a good decision because, again, this is the ultimate buy sign, 100-day, 50-day, and stock price. When that sets up again, which it's setting up again right here, that's a buy-in point. And we can see that the stock traveled up to 95. So, again, we have the stock price, 50-day, 100-day. So the, the technical analysis is showing that the stock is in... Um, in the mo momentum mode to keep moving higher. So if I if I put in a um, let me put in a Bollinger Band, and this is more statistics now. So here in the Bollinger Bands, we're looking at uh, statistically using standard deviation that you know if the stock reaches this part of the Bollinger Band, that statistically it should head towards the lower part of the Bollinger Band. So statistically saying, I think this is two standard deviations. The stock. Um, statistically will not be able to surpass the upper Bollinger Band or the lower Bollinger, Bollinger Band. So if it touches either the top or the bottom, if it touches the top, that's a good point to sell the stock. Although you can see here it touched the top a couple of times, although it, it did go down after that. But here it, it touched the top of the Bollinger Band four times. And generally when you see a four time touch, that's a really good sign to sell because it's, it's not likely to touch for a fifth time. And then quite quite soon after it touched the bottom band and that would be a good time to purchase again and here we have the stock actually exceeding when you see the stock exceeding the Bollinger Band that's a really clear buy sign and we have that happen here and happen here again so uh, happened three times here so that is um, a good indication that the stock has a lot of momentum behind it and is going to keep moving higher if we look at the relative strength index this measures how over purchased the, the company is to how oversold. And we had a, a long history here of it being, you know, pretty much over purchased for a great period of time. And then it moved um, to a low point in May of being uh, oversold. And that would have been a good buy in point. Um, and then we could see here now that again, it, it is the RSI saying that the company is over uh, purchased. But the company can run over purchased for a while. So it, it did have a similar thing back in March and also in April that reached this level of, um, let's say, uh, let's see if I can get it. On July 23rd, it's getting close to the 75 point mark. And typically, if it's trading below, if it's trading close to 25 or um, 70, those are two points of buying in and buying out. So it would say, the RSI would say that the company is completely over purchased and may be a time to sell. Although with Under Armour, it can stay that way for a while. So it may, uh, you know, it may look like Under Armour could penetrate $100 in the next couple of weeks, but certainly really straining and has, um, with all the good news behind it now, has really kind of done everything it can to get to this level and any sort of negativity could easily pull the stock back. So I think in the short term it's risky to own Under Armour at this price level but if you buy in with the idea of holding it long term it would be difficult to do poorly with the stock even if it has a slump and goes back to say 70 or 60 eventually it will surpass this current high as a company really has a lot of room to continue to grow. Let's put up a comparison to say uh, Nike, Nike, and let's see. So let's put up a comparison, and let me let me turn off some of these indicators to clean up things a little bit. Um, uh, let's see, just so we can see a little bit more. Okay, so here's the comparison, and you can see that um, Nike has moved up. Um, Pretty has done pretty well as well uh, as uh, not as st astonishing as Under Armour has done, but it's moved up in sort of a similar passion fashion. It's not so different if you look at some of them, some of the uh, moves here. It's just sort of a um, didn't have a good spike here, but it has been moving up pretty decently. So Nike, being the biggest competitor uh, and having the most market share, is definitely a slower growth company. However, it seems that apparel, sports apparel is a very growth category that people more and more people are continuing to buy athletic shoes and athletic um, 
workout clothes and sweats and and both these name brands seem to be something that people like to wear and feel proud to wear so i think in the ever increasing area of the sports apparel and the crossover sports apparel into other types of apparel has made this a growth industry as well so if you bought both companies under armor and nike that's a good sort of balance between getting the most out of this growth area and and because you know it'd be very difficult for either of these companies not to uh, outperform the S&P 500 over the next uh, five years okay so that's just sort of a, a quick little look into Under Armour stock and trying to answer the question that uh, a lot of people have to buy sell or hold the stock now these videos are uh, for educational purposes for students of mine and it's not meant as a uh, recommendation of what you should actually do with your real money as a disclaimer okay thank you and see you again next time